to Sounding Board. This is a weekly community television program produced and directed by club members of Seroptimist International of Novato. The mission of Seroptimist is improving the lives of women and girls through prog programs leading to social and economic empowerment. My name is Carol Bennett, a club member, and my guest today is Jim Crumpler, who is a retired pharmacist. And, you know, Jim, I'm going to say, you really amazed me once you retired and decided to do something in the community because you went for it. You went for your passion, which was museums, and found there was something missing, and you went around, went about healing it and making it better. So tell us what that process was all about, Jim. So when I retired from being a pharmacist, I wanted to do something totally different, totally new, and... Since I lived in Novato my whole life, I was interested in the history of Novato. So I joined the Novato History Guild. And then I've always been interested in older history, like Olimpali. So I joined uh, TOP, which is the people of Olimpali, and um, got involved in both of those organizations. And the more I did it, the more I talked to people about what I was doing, I found out that no one had been to either museum, and few people even knew about these museums. So, And how many museums do we so have in Novato? So there's six museums in Novato that mm -hmm. no one knows about. <laughs> and, if, and the people that do know about them haven't visited them. And they're wonderful little museums. And so when I got involved with these first two museums, I saw that first these two museums didn't talk to each other. Hmm. I mean, they just, not, they weren't, they didn't have a problem, they, they just didn't happen. So I started talking to the other museums and all six museums had the same issues. You know, they didn't have enough money, they didn't have enough volunteers, they didn't have any money for advertising, nobody knew where they were, nobody was visiting visiting them and I thought these museums were great and I thought that something should happen. And so uh, I had a theory that there's museum people that like museums and there are people that don't like museums. And the people that do like museums probably pretty much like all museums. So the first thing I did is I talked to all the museums and got there okay and then in every museum I put a brochure stand so when you walk in the museum, you see this brochure stand, and the brochure stand has the five brochures from the other five museums. So you're in one museum, and you're looking at the five brochures from the other museum. So, you know, if you've got somebody that likes museums in your, in your museum, it's your big opportunity to tell them about the other museums. Mm -hmm. So I think this was a big deal. And so then I had some other ideas, like... Uh, advertising all six museums at one time and instead of doing it separately. Uh, talk about how close these great museums are. I mean, from what the farthest museums are apart is like 20 minutes, seven miles. And so I went to the city and I said, let's advertise all these museums together. And they said, no, we can't do that. We sponsor Hamilton and Novato History Guild. We can't for kind of political reasons, we couldn't do it. But you might want to talk to the chamber. So like all the poly is sponsored by the state, and some yeah. are by the city, and then some yeah, are private. You know, they're all nonprofits, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. So then they said, why don't you try a chamber of commerce? So I went to the chamber of commerce, and they wouldn't talk to me. So then I went <laughs> to um, somebody else in the city. I was talking to him, and I said, how come nobody will talk to me? I, it's like I'm trying to sell them something. You know, I'm volunteering my time. I've got some good ideas, nobody will talk to me. And they said, you need to organize. You mm -hmm. need to organize, officially organize the six museums. So I went to the six museums and I said, let's form an organization. Uh, we're gonna be the Novato Museum Association. We're gonna work together. And I think when we work together, we can accomplish more uh, at, at cheaper. You know, I mean, you can, uh, one of the first things we did was we got an advertisement in the paper uh, the Chronicle had this advertisement on things happening in Marin County, and we got a $2,000 ad, which is a quarter section of the page, 
and no one could afford the $2,000, but when you split that $2,000 six ways, it wasn't a problem. Great. And when you do a, a special supplement like that on Marin County, you know, that's something that some people would save someday. That's not a throwaway kind of section. Yeah. That's a section people would save. So you it know, has a lot of value. Sure. And, you know, this, of course, in a chronicle will go all over the Bay Area. And, mm -hmm. again, the idea is somebody living in uh, San Jose is not going to drive all the way to Nevada to see one or two museums. But they might see, come up here six. for six museums. Six. So uh, that was the idea, and already we've got people from the South Bay that said, I saw your ad in the Chronicle, right. and I thought I'd come up and check it out. So, you know, I, I know it's worked a little bit. So, mm -hmm. so well, then we started working some other things. You know, we get together once a, once a month and discuss ideas, what one museum was doing, and exchanging ideas, and uh, it's worked out really good, I think. Great, great. Well, you know, for the sake of our viewers, I'll make you a bet. There's probably maybe two people in our entire audience that could name all six museums in Nevada. So uh, just to help everybody out, maybe we should give a little tour, a quick tour of 101. Great idea. So let's start. We're going to do a quick tour. Three minutes is the max on, on each one of these. Okay. So we're going to start uh, driving up 101 as if we're approaching uh, Nevada from the south and exit on Hamilton Parkway into the old Hamilton Air Force Base. Well, our first stop is the Hamilton Field History Museum on Hanger Avenue. Tell us what we're going to find there, Jim. So this is the most southern of the six museums. Um, it's in Hamilton Field. Hamilton Field was an air base from 1935 to 1975 for 40 years. And for that 40-year period, it had a huge impact on Marin County. I mean, a lot of people worked at the, at the Air Force Base. Uh, when I was growing up in Novato, it seemed like a third of Novato uh, was involved in Hamilton. You know, there's a lot of civilian employees, not just military, mm. that were working there. Uh, the population in Novato, I think, was really affected by Were you uh, born Hamilton. in Novato? I was actually born in San Francisco, but I oh, moved okay. to Novato when I was four. So you've really <laughs> seen a change. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Novato or Hamilton has had a big impact on, on uh, Marin County. And so this is what this museum shows. Uh, it also shows uh, the impact that uh, Hamilton had on basically world peace. I mean, it was involved in, uh, you know, Second World War, Korea War, you know, Vietnam. Um, so, like one example would be one of the one of the famous things that Hamilton happened at Hamilton that no one knows about is they they would be they would send planes from Hamilton to Hawaii to just get the planes to Hawaii, and so they would uh, unload all the armament and everything off the planes, load them up with gas, send them off to Hawaii, cross their fingers and hope they made it because mm. you know this is back in the 30s and 40s and Planes didn't, you know, they were totally different than they are now. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the thing that I think was interesting on this particular day, December 7th, mm. 1941, uh, 12 B-17 bombers totally stripped down, full of all the gas they could carry, took off for Hawaii. When they got to Hawaii, they were met by the Japanese planes because that was Pearl Harbor Day. Mm. Of course, they didn't have any armament, uh, mm. I think, I think most of the bombers didn't survive. Wow. But that is certainly something that I'm sure no one knows that happened involving Hamilton. Yeah. Um, when, so, I went, when I went out to the Hamilton Field History Museum, I was surprised that there was a, a huge Vietnamese resettlement program here that they brought in all these Vietnamese refugees. I, I, I didn't even know that was part of Nevada's history. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. So, so if you go to <laughs> Hamilton Museum, you'll see there's a little film clip of what I just talked about, the B-12 uh, B bomb, B-17 bombers that went to uh, Hawaii on Pearl Harbor Day. Uh, there's all kinds of uh, military memorabilia, people in uniforms and, you know, all kinds of patches and stuff. Uh, one of the most interesting displays they have is they've got a scale model of every plane that ever land, landed at Hamilton, wow. which is real interesting. Yeah. Um, they have... Um, they have, a, they have a map of Marin County showing all the air crashes 
of that happened during Marin County because there was a lot of planes flying around out of Hamilton and they were crashing into Mount Tam and it's quite a museum. Lots it, of history there. There is. Very much. Well, very close to that, um, the Hamilton Field History Museum, right up the street, just a little ways up, is the Marin Museum of Contemporary Art. People don't always think of that as a museum, but that is one of our six museums. What will we see there? That's on Palm Drive. So that's Marin Mocha. It was formed by a group of artists from uh, Indian Valley College, uh, which is a part of College of Marin, the Indian Valley campus. And these group of artists got together in 2007 and went to the city of Novato and said, could we make a deal for, the, for all these vacant buildings there in uh, Building 500? And they made a deal with Novato, and now there's Marin Mocha. And so, so like, like the Novato Art Commission, um, there's over 50 uh, different artist studios. <laughs> there's a couple of artist galleries. There's a museum store. Uh, it's a lovely great place. store, by the way. It's a, Very it's, a, nice. it's a really great place. I mean, all these artists now have a place to work at reasonable prices. Um, they give classes on all kinds of uh, art projects. Uh, they have uh, ongoing displays that change every month or so. Uh, right now there's a display on, uh, the, actually the, the artists at Marin Mocha have their own display going on now. And also uh, there's a display on uh, the <coughs> national drawings Hmm. Whatever, I'm not too sure what that means, but that, that's another display that they have. So there's two displays going and on it's now. A nice, it's a nice community for the artists to, oh, it's to great. be it's there. I mean, they're all community. there among each other, and, you know, with each other, sharing ideas and inspiring each other. Yeah. I think it's just a fabulous idea. Yeah. Well, let's go on over uh, high, on the other side of Highway 101 on Ignacio into the shopping center there. And tucked away behind a coffee shop is the Space Station Museum. What a find that is. So, this, so the Space Station Museum was founded in 2010, and I think it's always kind of interesting to how, the, so how it started. So this guy, Ken Winans, uh, was a real space nut, and you know that he had all this space memorabilia in his garage or someplace, and his wife is yelling at him to get rid of this stuff, and he didn't want to spend a lot of money to put it in storage. And so he goes to the people in the Ignacio Shopping Center and says, you've got an open space in your uh, shopping center. You've had an open space for months. Let me put my space stuff in there, and I think I can attract some people to your shopping center. If you don't like it, I'll move out. And so they made some kind of agreement in there that he got to move in for basically nothing. Um, he set up his is space stuff, and he has incredible stuff. He's oh, got man. models of all the rockets. He's got a lunar landing module. He's got space, he's got um, a couple of capsules in there. He's got uh, space suits. He's got a little moon rock. Uh, <laughs> he's got movies about, uh, you know, some of the space exploration. It's just an incredible little uh, little store inside this shopping center. So, you know, it was doing pretty well. Was, you know, they saw a lot of people coming in there. And then they had a uh, space festival in August. Yes, they I went had to that. like 3,000 people it was that brought to that area. Fabulous. And it was, I mean, the shopping center was loving it. I mean, the co all the coffee shops in the area ran mm -hmm. out of coffee. The pizza places in the area ran out of pizza. I mean, it was just a huge success. So, and how many astronauts were actually there? Yeah, there were four astronauts. Four. Four astronauts shining, signing books, answering questions. It was fabulous. They were you really know? friendly guys, too. They weren't Real snobs. Friendly. You know, yep. They were really nice guys. Oh, it was great. And, and I shouldn't say guys. There was a woman there, there wasn't was, there, there I'm was sorry. A, yeah. Bad girl. Yeah. Okay, well, let's get back uh, toward 101 and go up to the center of, um, uh, uh, center of Novato downtown, and uh, we'll get to the uh, Novato History Museum, which is located in a beautiful old Victorian building next door to the Novato Chamber of Commerce. And tell us about what we're going to find in that building. So too. the Novato History Guild has the Novato History Museum in an 1850 uh, postmaster 
house. It used to be uh, down on South Nevada Boulevard. And in 1972, they moved it to its present location. They remodeled it. And in 1976, it opened as a Nevada History Guild. It's a really cute little house. It's got two stories. The upstairs is all archives. There's an amazing amount of archives up there. Just They have uh, oral history from over 100 people in Nevada. Um, just, there, there's stuff in there that we don't even know that's there. We're still working on the, the stuff up there. One of, I was in there a couple weeks ago, and they're looking at this land grant that was written in the late 1800s, and it looks like it's signed by Andrew Jackson, President hmm. Andrew Jackson. Just incredible, the stuff that's up there. Hmm. So uh, then you go downstairs and there's displays. Uh, right now there's uh, two displays. One is baseball in Novato. Uh, I don't know how many people know, but Lefty Gomez, a famous uh, professional baseball player, came from Novato. And, and baseball was big back here, back in the early days, you know, early 30s and 40s. Mm -hmm. Baseball was a big deal. I mean, they didn't have TV, you know, they had to do something. <laughs> so the other display now is uh, railroads in Novato. Railroads are always a big deal. In, ba in fact, before uh, <coughs> Novato High School came into being, if you lived in Novato and you went to high school, you had to go to San Rafael. And for a long time, you would take the train there, hmm. which is, you know, pretty interesting. So trains in Novato uh, is their other display. And hmm. they have displays that change all the time. And great little museum. Uh, one of the most interesting things about, that I like about that museum is if you live in Novato and you go downstairs and you start looking at the pictures, you're going to see pictures of where you live. Mm -hmm. Of you know what it was like years ago. Mm. Well, we uh, sort of gave away the last one uh, that might be old and Polly, but you know what? People might be still guessing. What's the sixth one? And so, since we already gave away old and Polly, there's only one more left to guess, and that is if we go a little farther out west uh, on Novato Avenue, we come to Miwok Park, and there we have the Marin Museum of the American Indian. So, the Marin Museum of American Indian came about in 1967 as a depository for all the artifacts that they were, the contractors were finding when they were, a lot of building was going oh. on in the 60s in Marin. And so they had to have a place to put all the arrowheads and mortar and pestles and all this stuff, and that's where it got its start. And it's on uh, a, an Indian um, a coastal Miwok village site, right there where it's at, yes. in Miwok Park, okay. that is where a village site was. And it's, it exists to promote uh, Native Americans, not mm -hmm. just coastal Miwoks, not just Pomo, not just Indians in uh, California, but all the Native Americans in the United States. Mm -hmm. And uh, they do a great job. I mean, there's all kinds of artifacts there. <laughs> um, they also have ongoing displays there. Um, it, it's really a great place. Uh, and of course, one of the big things they do is uh, you know, the kids, yeah. third and fourth graders in California have to do California history. Mm -hmm. And so they, I think last year they had over 4,000 kids going through yeah. there on field trips learning about Native Americans in California. Frequently I'm in Miwok Park on a little run or a walk or something. I always see a group of kids there. Yeah, yeah. Always. Yeah, it's a great place. I mean, they have uh, barbecue pits and uh, <clears throat> picnic tables. <clears throat> Besides just a museum, it's a great place to take your family, have a picnic on a Sunday or something. And again, you know, they always, they're always having different displays. Uh -huh. A couple times a year they have like Native Americans come there and do dancing and flint napping and basket <laughs> making, all that stuff. Great. It's a great place. Well, um, if we go back toward Highway 101, and there's a new way to get to Olympali State Historic Park now, because we have to go up to San Marin and then pick up Redwood Highway to go all the way up there. Is that the way we always went? No. <laughs> that anyway. is the best thing that's ever happened yeah. to Olympali, because Olympali, well, originally, you had, to cross, you had to stop in the middle of the highway and cross across the other yes. lanes and take your life and... and 
Whatever. You had to be careful there. Yeah. And so then they changed that. And so now you have to, and then you had to go up to the dump yeah. and do the flyover and then come back. So basically, in order to go to Olin Poly, you had to almost go to Petaluma to get there. <laughs> but the new frontage road is wonderful. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot more people coming to Olin Poly. You can ride your bike to Olin Poly. Whole families can, it's a great place to, you know, ride out as a family and mm -hmm. go to Olin Poly. Uh, go hiking there. Um, so tell us about the museum that's actually on the so, site. So so Olampali is an incredible place. You know, it's a it has water twelve months of the year. Oh. It has uh, a westward kind of face, so you're protected from all the westerly winds and the fog that come in from the coast. So it's a, it's a great place to live. And that's why Native Americans will live there for probably 8,000 years. Really? 8,000 years. <laughs> Plus, you know, water in Marin County in the fall is rare, and they have water year-round there. Hmm. So people live there for 8,000 years. So it's got 8,000 years of history right there. And then, uh, you know, the, during the mission period, um, it had, you know, some... Basically, they took most of the people that were living in the Olin Poly village, took them to the San Rafael Mission. Hmm. One of the heroes there, one of the smart Miwoks, was uh, Camilio Inenta, and uh, he learned how to speak English. He worked for the mission, and so when the missions went away during the secularization in the 1830s, they gave him Olin Poly. And oh. so he farmed it, he had an adobe there, uh, he was doing great there. Um, and he had that place as a farm, a big ranch, until 1856. But in 1846, uh, something really exciting happened there, it was the Bear Flag Revolt. Mm. And the Bear Flag Revolt, if you don't know, is what I call California's Alamo. Mm. That's when the people in California pushed the Mexican people out of the state. Uh, John C. Fremont, Fremont, Kit Carson, came down, uh, had a little skirmish there right at Olin Poly. A couple Mexicans died, and after that, they slowly just pushed the Mexicans out of California. California became its own territory for a while, and then in, uh, I think, 1850 <laughs> became a state. So that's, that's some of the early history of Olin Poly. Then after that, uh, the Burdells, uh, this, the, yeah. first, the first dentist in California, first dentist in San Francisco bought the place, had a mansion, gardens. There's so much history out there. And then it was a commune for many years. And in the 60s, uh, mm -hmm. the Grateful Dead and some of their friends moved out there. It was a commune. It was pretty interesting out there. And then there was a fire and it burned. And Lots of good history out in that little museum that's tucked away there. Well, Jim, I know you're doing the job because I know for a fact I was down and staying overnight in, in Monterey. And there's a, there's a, you know, I went down to the lobby of the hotel and there's a whole bunch of flyers down there. And guess what's there? This thing wasn't the one that you did, but it shows all six of the museums on there in Nevada. So the word is getting out. People are going to be coming to Nevada and looking at the museums. And once so. they come to one museum, they'll see this, and they'll be wanting to go to all the other museums. So I finally got the Chamber of <laughs> Commerce to do this brochure. Oh, they did it, huh? They did that brochure. Uh, it's got, takes, has a little blurb about all six museums. Plus, the most important thing is it's got a map in there. And the map shows how to get to each museum from each other museum, and it shows you how close they are together. Great. So great. it's really easy to see all these six museums in a day, or, you know, you can see less than that. But and don't you have a website now, too? Yes. There's a website. You can just type in Novato Museums, and it'll pop up. You'll see the Novato uh, Museum Association, and that'll give you a link to all the other museums and shows you what's happening in all the other museums. And, uh, great. Great. You know, I just think this is a fabulous thing that you've given to the community because it's, I know from personal experience, it's hard to go out and sell a wish, and that's what you have, a wish. And, but when you have something tangible, it's a lot easier. But when you're selling an intangible, it's hard to get people together. I really have to admire you for what you've done, Jim. Thank you. It's been a great, great legacy to leave to our community. So I'm going to thank Jim Crumpler for being our guest tonight, today. <laughs> and uh, behind the scenes, I would like to thank Patricia Hess, our Seroptimist member, for being the director, and uh, Freda Kaplan and Patricia Carr for helping in the studio. 
it takes a team to get this done, believe me. And Leon Johnson is our technical engineer who we always want to thank. And now we get to thank the Buck Institute uh, Research on Aging for allowing us to use their beautiful television uh, production studio. So, uh, but most of all, of course, we want to thank our viewing audience. Thank you. Thank you.